Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna take you on a garden tour through my friend's backyard. So I'm standing in my friend's backyard right now and part of the reason I chose this yard to show you guys is because it's a small garden, but it also has a very clear and consistent theme. This entire garden is designed by someone who is also a gardener and they chose a cottage style theme and they kept their theme within a very clear color spectrum. So whites, purples and pinks and I think she's done a stellar job so I just wanted to take you through to see to show you some of the things that she did and maybe give you some inspiration on how you can turn your garden even if it's a small space into a very beautiful and um, well thought out scheme. So one of the things I want to first show you you're going to see in this garden she's incorporated a lot of roses which is very quintessential English cottage garden plants. So roses are very, very common in that. And she's chosen the exact same rose throughout this garden. It's of course a David Austin rose called Desdemona. And I will, I will put some links down below if you wanna do your own research and look into where you can buy them. So she's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I believe, that are scattered throughout and one of them has a bloom over here it's just starting they've already had their first flush and so she just recently pruned them and this is what the flower looks like it's beautiful it's a very kind of light pinky white color so that's the Desdemona rose so she's got consistency as far as having the same plant throughout, I think that's a really important aspect when you have a smaller garden, is that you don't need 1,500 different plants. You need to select a few and repeat them throughout. So when you see here, we've got the Desdemona Rose. And then next here, we have, it's a, ter it's a certain kind of Texas sage. So in Texas, for my Northeastern gardeners, you may not be able to grow these because they tend to be warm, loving plants. But what they have is they bring that blue foliage, they're drought tolerant, and this is a very specific variety. Let me see if I can get a better angle away from the sun. Okay, there we go. So this is a very specific variety because it's short, it's small, in fact, let me show you here, it's called Desperado Sage. And it's hardy in zones eight to 10. So these tend to be a little bit smaller. So there's lots of um, Texas sages on the sides of roads here. They're really beautiful. They have this gorgeous purple flower that pollinators love. And they all have that kind of semi evergreen structure to them with that silvery blue foliage. So they're great for mixed borders in that sense. But the wonderful thing is that they have so many hybrids now. And so this one will stay smaller. But as all of you know, we had the snowpocalypse this past winter and so these died down, a lot of them died down completely to the ground. But, as a testament to them, they've all come back. They've started to fully bush out. So they'll get probably a little bit bigger. I, don't, I can't remember the exact measurements, I, but I'll put it on the screen when I can remember when I do a little bit of research. And then, this is a new thing she's done this year. We've got a row of white pentas. And while pentas are technically a tropical plant and used as an annual here all over the place, the reason why she chose these is because if you look, well, for one, pentas are awesome. They're beautiful, they're easy to grow, but their heads to me kind of remind me of the mop heads of hydrangeas. And obviously hydrangeas are a staple plant for that cottage garden style, for any, for any cottage garden, Hydrangeas, you know, you all know your gardeners. They're, they're very common and beloved, but it can be hard to grow them here because it gets so hot and sunny and we have a much longer hot season than those of you that are up north. So we're dealing with 100, 100 degree temperatures sometimes as early as May. So it's really hard to grow that, but she does have hydrangeas in the front, but it's gonna be, it's a different kind of hydrangea than those macrophilia, the mop heads. So I'll show you what those are in just a little bit. So. Let me work my way back down here. So as you see, another consistent plant that she has is this pencil holly. Pencil hollies are evergreen, 
as you can get, as you can get, as you can see, they get really tall and they tend to be more narrow. And on the back fence, this is actually, she didn't mean to grow this, but this, as many of you out there know, this is that trumpet creeper. And this is a very aggressive vine and it can be very difficult to get rid of. So she has plans of replacing this vine eventually, but for now she's leaving it because as you can see, her neighbors are right there. So it gives them a little bit of privacy. And also as you might be able to tell there's bees and stuff coming on this and hummingbirds love it. So for now it's there. Obviously orange is not within her color scheme, but just because of time, this is, it's there. Also, you can see she has this little birdhouse. Let me get a little bit closer so you can see it's super cute. They have had birds in here before and it's on this white plank here. And there was one over there, but it got knocked off in a storm, I believe but they plan to replace it whenever they can. So in this border, what she's done is she's also got uh, four white pots and repeated them throughout and put the same plant in each one. And this is the Vintage Rose Yarrow from Bluestone Perennials. I also have this in my yard and I love it. So also something else I wanna show you, she's got lamb's ear. So she's repeated a lot of that silver foliage throughout the garden, which is giving it consistency and keeps it within that cool tone spectrum. So if I show you here, she's got this lamb's ear. I'm sure all of you know about this, at least my Southern gardeners, you know all about this. It's a very drought tolerant plant. Its leaves are velvety and it, I mean, I have actually pet lamb before and it does kind of remind me of a lamb's ear a little bit, which is pretty cool. And it gets these purple stalks and pollinators love those purple flowers. Now, another cottage garden staple is the Rose of Sharon. So she's got two. The reason this one is a little bit bigger is because during that snow apocalypse, this one fared a lot better than this one did over here, but they waited. They weren't sure if they're gonna to have to replace it. They waited and it has started to come back. So let me show you. There's that. And then similarly, she has these two pots. It's kind of hard to tell because they're completely overwhelmed right now, but one here and one there. And then she has a purple salvia with a pink and, oh, it's, I can show you right there, pink and white super bells or kufia let me show you it's a really pretty combination so when you have that purple color here from the salvia mixing with that pink it's clearly again within that spectrum that she was hoping for so now she also has this is an arbovite arbovita excuse me and i think it's the chinese morgan arbovita she found this on a website. I have not been able to find it in the local nurseries and it's an awesome tiny little evergreen shrub. So, you know, whenever you're planting a flower bed, you want to think about four season interest. So you need stuff that's going to be there in the winter. And these are of course evergreen. They grow, they've grown perfectly right here. In fact, I love them so much. I purchased some for another garden that I work in and they provide that evergreen structure. They stay really small. So they're super great for, plugging in a little tiny spot where you need something that's evergreen. So she's got four of those planted throughout and they've done really well. I can show you right there. And those love that spot. And then of course, how can you have a cottage garden without buddleias? These are the microchip buddleias. I'm not sure the exact color name, but they stay pretty small. Now, just so you know, we did have a lot of rain this morning. So everything's been kind of, it's drooping like that. Um, but that's why you see some of those plants going down like that. So one more time, I'm gonna do a quick um, scan throughout this backyard to show you how by using a few principles of staying within a certain color scheme, repeating the plants as opposed to trying to get a whole bunch of different species. And then, um, 
trying to structure things so she always has a little bit of winter interest with her pencil hollies, with those arborvitas, and um, with the sages here. So I'm gonna do a quick scan all the way through. And now I'm gonna take you to their front where they've done the exact same theme, the cottage garden. And as you can see, the reason why is because it goes with their Tudor style house. Okay, so remember before when I was saying that she does have hydrangeas, but it may not be the hydrangeas that you're thinking of that we often see in the Northeast. So what we have here actually, she has on both sides, and I'll show you in just a moment, she's used the native species of hydrangea, the oak leaf hydrangea. She's used about four of them up here, and then she has one of them over there, and I'll show you that stuff in a second. So oak leaf hydrangeas are the only U.S. native hydrangea species, and you will also see those in the Northeast, but they grow much better down here. They can handle the heat a lot better, and of course they have that full season interest because even though these have already bloomed in the spring, as you can see, leaving those flower heads on there, it's a lot of interest, and then in the fall, their leaves turn that really beautiful, dark maroon so color. let me take you through here now remember so we were talking about that snow apocalypse that we had right we had the snow apocalypse her indian hawthorns as you can see have definitely suffered because of that but thankfully they are growing back because normally she would have this really beautiful lush green hedge right here um, and then this is the bush um, yopon that she has along here. So we've got this formal structure, these little balls here that bring that structure. They're evergreen. They've got the winter interest in the front. She's managed to get these columbines. For all my Texas gardeners, you know that some, most of the columbines can be very difficult to grow here because they tend to like more acidic soil and they like that alpine condition a little bit better. Um, but then what I also really wanted to show you here, she has done something so clever. She's created this little rock garden in here. So we have this ajuga that you all probably know. We have more dianthus. And this dianthus, technically when you have rocks like this, it's a lithic mulch. So it really likes that drainage a lot better. But inside here, she's kind of mixed up all these different types of rocks. So she's got in here these rocks right here. We can just buy this stuff at Lowe's. That's pretty common. But she's got this blue river rock in here and she's made this standing stone circle. And in the middle, you'll see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a whole different video on this. This is something very special to an artist here in the area. These are called bee cups, and they're little water cups for pollinators. But I won't spend too much time on that because I'm gonna have a whole different post about it. Then, she's obviously got these sedums and little ground covers that she's placed throughout. She's got these hen and chicks that she's put in consistently, and then we have some Wool, I think this is, wool. no, this is elephantine. This is elephantine that's spread beautifully throughout. So it's just a nice little idea when you've got a spot that maybe is having a little bit of an issue, maybe it's just not great soil. You wanna think about using other things aside from plants and you can create little tree areas. And I forgot to mention, let me take you back in there. She's actually got glow in the dark rocks in there as well so at night that has a sweet little spot very cute very twee so then coming back through here she's got a bunch of peonies that are beautiful i believe she purchased these from blue stones then i can't remember the variety of this but of course any cottage garden really you want roses in there so she's got that and then she's got this ivy coming up here i know that's probably freaking a lot of you out but it's fine and she's a lot of stuff died back here but i think she's trying she wants to put some lupins or something i can't exactly remember but she's going to be doing a lot along here now i also want to take a moment to show you this she just started so everything's kind of a baby so a lot of things aren't fully grown yet 
The hostas look pretty good. Some stuff she's had to replace because it's no apocalypse. This is a really beautiful clematis that she's growing in here. And along the way, she's dotted a whole bunch of shade perennials because this, this side of the house gets a lot of shade. We've got hostas, as you can see. She's also repeated that clematis. And then she has some astilbes throughout and she's got hookahs and she's kind of made this a really cute narrow garden so now i'm going to take you over to this side remember how i mentioned she has got a different kind of oak leaf hydrangea so she's got this other one here and as you can see what's supposed to happen these white flowers they turn they should be turning that kind of mauve pink color but if they get too singed or maybe a little bit too much sun they turn that brown color but it's still interesting even if that happens this right here is also an oak leaf hydrangea but is the peewee variety so it's a much smaller variety because these oak leaves can get pretty big but she managed to get one that's small that she can tuck underneath this tree and then of course she's got a whole bunch of peonies which as all of you know are very much cottage garden staples so I just want to show you on a backup here she's got some euphorbias because this area is full sun and the life of me I can remember what this variety is I'm going to put it up on the screen but it is an alpine plant it gets a little leggy a little soppy when it gets humid like this because remember it just rained um, but when it gets colder and a little bit drier these things come to life and it's a really beautiful silvery blue foliage and again it's that repetition of having that silver foliage throughout whether it's in the back or it's here in the front and it's got that very cool toned vibe about it so i want to show you here again what she's done she's been consistent she's got these containers that she changes up every year this year she's got plumbago in them along with some kufia so it's the color scheme up here is very much yellow and white she's also got these roses here i don't know the exact variety i think i can uh teasing georgia teasing georgia i'll try and put a picture of the flower on the screen so hopefully you guys can see me i know the sun's getting it's getting later in the day so this is a really cool area of her garden because she's got this side area that was just a little bit dry a little bit sparse so she decided to make a butterfly garden so this entire wall even though it's small is dedicated to butterflies and that just goes to show you know i you know you guys know i love butterfly gardening and it doesn't matter how small it is you can put space for a little butterfly area so let me take you through it so the next part that i want to show you we've got these wood planters and one of the cool things about these planters is they were handmade by my uncle who is a carpenter among other things but um, he designed these so there's one long one and then there's two shorter ones or smaller ones and in it we've got all sorts of plants that are meant to be either shelter or nectar or host plants for the butterflies and we've got a couple butterflies or caterpillars to show you so one of the first things I wanna show you, we've got, this is a trailing lantana. This is trailing lavender lantana. This will definitely, this gets really wide and it'll continue to droop all the way down. I'm sure a lot of you grow, they grow this variety and so you know what I'm talking about, they get big. And then in here, we have some nepeta. And I believe this is the cat's pajamas by, yep, by Proven Winners. This is the cat pajamas variety, an awesome variety. You'll also see she's placed more of those bee cups in here for the pollinators to come and get some water if they want it. We've got this new, it's kind of a twirl, just seeing if it works. I brought this to her this year. It's a, a variegated hybrid of the butterfly weed. It's really pretty, I'm not sure if it's gonna work as a host plant. I haven't seen anything on it. We've got a bubbly in here. I mean, everything is kind of packed in, but that's the point. We've got pink cushion flower here. We've got more dianthus. Then we've got more Nepeta, we've got coneflowers. That is an, a, um, I think it's the white atlas peony, which was beautiful. We've got bronze fennel. This is her first year growing bronze fennel. It's doing great. She tried dill, just wasn't as hardy. It's a little bit harder to grow. We got the white swan echinacea, which I actually started from seed for her last year and it's blown up. And we've got more of this trailing lavender lantana, 
with, I can't remember the exact variety of this, but this little topiary thing, which if you're a butterfly or caterpillar, this is a great area to come in and get some shelter. Evergreens are really good for doing that. So I wanna show you, this is definitely working. We got caterpillars. If you can see here, this is the black swallowtail. We all get this on our dill, fennel, carrots. We get a lot of them. We've got different instars here. So this one is fourth, oh, let me get that back there. Fourth or fifth instar. And then we've got this tiny one. Let's see if I can get it for you. Oh, my camera may not be able to do it. I'll try and pop up a picture of it. But right next to it, you've got it. Oh, yep, there we go. Tiny little baby. And so there's quite a few of them. I've never seen a swallowtail lay less than five or six eggs on the fennel. And we've got another one right there. If you can see, let me zoom in, get that focused. Okay. And so part of the reason she's got, obviously echinacea comb flowers are great for pollinators. They love them. But also you've got these really sturdy stems. So she's also trying to provide structure for caterpillars if they want to put their chrysalis on there. Same thing with this peony. Uh, the likelihood is they'll probably crawl up against this wall. But there's another caterpillar I wanted to show you. This is a penta. It's been kind of eaten up, as you can tell. And the reason why, if you can look very up right there, I'm gonna move it over. But look there, we've actually got three, I think it's, it's called the hornworm or it's the hawk moth, I believe. So pentas are awesome for a number of reasons, but they are also host plants. Now, <laughs> a lot of people don't like these because they can kind of create an infestation. In fact, I had a one year a hedge of pentas that got completely decimated in like a week or two by, I can't even tell you, like 30 caterpillars. Um, but there's one there, there's another, there's, you know they come in green and they also come in brown. This, that's the big one down there. Let me see if I can get this to zoom or focus properly. If you can see, yep, it's down there and so, and we've also got some whorl milkweed in here. So technically we've got two varieties of milkweed, um, but it's so it's worth So I hope you enjoyed this little garden tour. Um, I just think that she's done an amazing job of taking a small space and really creating a beautiful garden that has a consistent theme. Every time I go into it, I feel this calmness and I feel like my eyes, there's so much balance and so much thought that she put into, whether it's the rock garden or it was the backyard or the butterfly garden. She's put in so much time and effort to make it cohesive and to uh, use what she had. And I think she's done a stellar, stellar job and I hope that you guys are able to find some inspiration on maybe ways that you can turn your garden into something similar, even if it's small. So thank you, I'll see you next time.